wonderful person, this is Anton, and so let's start with this beautiful image. This is the Red Spider Nebula, and I thought it was perfect because it's around Halloween time. And this incredible image was recently captured by the James Webb Space Telescope, revealing this gorgeous planetary nebula in all of its glory. But we know that it very likely formed this bizarre shape because the star in the center extremely likely has some kind of a hidden partner. Because this hourglass shape has been seen before, and in every single case this was formed by a binary system. And while today we're going to be discussing some of the most recent discoveries about this very beautiful and somewhat unusual phenomenon referred to as planetary nebula that can also be described as a kind of a final moment of a star very similar to our sun, as it essentially sheds its outer layers and then slowly transitions into a white dwarf. So this is literally the end of this particular star, and something similar is going to happen to the sun in something like 7 billion years from today. And so today we're going to be focusing on this very stunning, explosive final gasp of intermediate and low mass stars, that now because of observations from the James Webb Space Telescope, started to reveal additional secrets and started to show us that this bizarre stellar death is much more complicated and very often way more violent than we initially expected. But more importantly, we're also going to be discussing one of the most recent studies that actually analyzed nearly 1500 such objects in the entire galaxy, identifying very specific differences and discovering some really bizarre features we never expected. But I guess first, so let's start with the name itself, because here the name is a bit of a misconception. Even though they're called planetary nebula, they have nothing to do with planets. This is an ancient name that got stuck because back in the days when the telescopes were much weaker, these actually kind of resemble tiny planets because a lot of them were spherical in shape. And interestingly, this was the assumption at first. Researchers believed these were spherical objects. Mostly because as a star similar to our sun starts to shed its layers, it seems to do so relatively equally in every direction. But that assumption turned out to be incorrect. Even though astronomers assume that most of them would be spherical, we now know that only 20% are. The majority of them are very complex and very often contain either elliptical, asymmetric or even hourglass structures and very often because they are never really alone. They usually contain a partner that basically creates all of these very beautiful shapes. Although obviously some of them are spherical, like this one, the Ring Nebula, or this tiny cute one known as Lemon Slice Nebula. And Ring Nebula right here is one of the most famous planetary nebula. This is also known as NGC 6720 and it's been actively studied for many decades. But recent observations from the James Webb detected excess emissions that nobody knew about before. And this does suggest something strange. A compact dusty disk that seems to surround the central star and seems to be really large, approximately 2600 astronomical units. And this was recently reported in this study with scientists suggesting that this seems to be some kind of a remnant resulting from interactions with the binary companion during the star's earlier life. And because here the central star is also slightly variable, or basically changes in brightness once in a while, this may also be caused by some kind of a close companion, such as a faint dwarf star, that very likely formed this bizarre structure. And so even a very well-known planet or nebula still hides a lot of secrets. Likewise, the very similar in shape Southern Ring Nebula, NGC 3132, seems to possess some kind of a double ring, implying that there might be three stars here. This might be a triple star system. With this familiar hourglass shape that's common for these systems, here potentially formed by three partners. And so once again, in this study, on the molecular exoskeleton of the planetary nebula NGC 3132, researchers were able to identify a second ring perpendicular to the first that was most likely carved by some kind of a jet whose direction was influenced by the gravity of a third object, and in this case a massive object that was most likely another star. And so here once again we have another secret from another really famous planetary nebula. And then we also have some new observations and actually really beautiful pictures and videos from this beautiful object Crystal Bowl Nebula, NGC 1514. This is actually the older picture, because now it looks like this. And this is the power of the James Webb Space Telescope. And here's actually a really good comparison of a before and after picture. And this time this image resolves a very unusual tangled pattern of clumpy knots and a somewhat dramatic hourglass shape. Once again potentially the result of a binary system in the center. Here these binary stars have an orbit of about 9 years. 
But in this particular case, what's surprising here is what's missing. There seems to be a complete absence of complex carbon molecules. For example, the famous polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, also known as PAH. And these compounds are usually found in all of these planetary nebula, yet not here. And that's despite the fact that this image is exceptionally sharp. But why this particular compound is absent is uncertain. Because these types of systems are very good at producing these very complex carbon molecules. And so the only explanation right now is that, maybe because this is a binary, here the system itself acts as a kind of a stirrer. And so basically the two stars stir the elements around and mix them up so much that by the time they got ejected, they turned into something else. Which would make this a very bizarre example of a kind of a cosmic chemistry lab. Here, instead of pure complex carbon molecules, it instead formed something even more advanced. But that's at least the explanation for now. As of 2025, this still remains a mystery. But perhaps the most unsettling discovery comes from the famous Helix Nebula, the beautiful eye in the sky. And here the X-ray data from the NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory suggests that the central white dwarf may have actually destroyed a very closely orbiting planet. In other words, scientists have discovered remnants of an ancient planet orbiting this particular star. Or at least that's the potential explanation for the mysterious X-ray signal that has been detected from the nebula for the past 50 years. And this would not be surprising and actually confirms something we've seen from many different white dwarfs. It confirms that when these stars transition into white dwarfs, they can violently engulf many of the planets, especially the ones much closer, and can eventually annihilate most of the objects in the solar system, because unlike typical stars, white dwarfs are much denser and do produce much more violent interactions. And so here we have another example of a white dwarf destroying a planet. And a lot of these complex examples bring us to the fundamental facts about these planetary nebula. These expanding shells of ionized gas ejected from stars that are very similar to our Sun. Or actually stars that are anywhere from 0.8 solar masses to about 8 solar masses. But there's a really crucial reason they are so important. And it's this most recent study we're going to be discussing now that highlights all of this. Now, first of all, these objects don't really exist that long when it comes to the entire galaxy. They normally represent only a very short period of time, lasting anywhere from 30,000 to maybe 70,000 years in total. After this, they disappear, leaving behind a white dwarf. And so in this recent very comprehensive study that used a very large database of these objects, specifically analyzing 1449 true planetary nebula, Researchers made some incredible discoveries about all of them and even found certain differences in certain locations in the galaxy. And here this was just a comparison based on what science has discovered in the Milky Way. And well, first of all, not surprisingly, most of these objects are inside the galactic disk. We don't usually find these outside of the galaxy just because they require a very specific star. And here's roughly where they're all located. So as you can see, some of them are a little bit above the galactic plane, but the majority are inside the disk. And they're all kind of similar in size, on average, approximately 1.5 light years across. But what is surprising is that they're a little bit smaller inside the galaxy, but become a little bit bigger in size in the galactic halo. Although in this case, this might be the result of higher density in the galaxy, lower density outside of the galaxy. So basically, if they're outside of the disk, they get to expand a little bit more. But their physical density is not actually that high approximately 1200 particles per cubic centimeter. Or basically in a tiny sugar cube, you'll only find about 1200 particles. I mean, for a vacuum of space, that's quite a lot, but I guess for where we are right now on planet Earth, that's nothing. Although in this case, the gas is extremely hot, usually about 10,000 Kelvin, making these relatively hot objects. And these are two features that seem to be the same no matter where you find these objects in a galaxy. So both the density and the temperature remain the same. But what is different is chemical composition. And so here by analyzing elements like hydrogen, helium, nitrogen, oxygen, and sulfur, researchers did find certain differences. And so for example, planetary nebulae in the thin disk or the location in the galaxy where we find some of the younger stars, including our Sun, there is generally a higher elemental abundance, which is, I guess, kind of expected because there are just a lot more elements in the thin disk and a lot more chemical interaction. In contrast, in the thick disk, or even in the halo, the elemental abundance is much lower and most of the nebulae are less enriched. Although here they did discover a somewhat unusual correlation that was unexpected a correlation between sulfur and nitrogen. Basically, the more sulfur you detect, the more nitrogen is present as well. 
and nitrogen is usually produced through the process known as the CNO cycle. So basically here nitrogen is tied to the star's specific evolution. But sulfur normally comes from the interstellar medium from which the star was born. And so the fact that here sulfur increases with nitrogen is an important astronomical discovery. It's going to help researchers differentiate various planetary nebula based on the mass and the evolutionary history of the progenitor star. Or just to rephrase this, even though sulfur and nitrogen both have distinct origins and should not be correlated, basically here nitrogen is produced by the star itself and sulfur comes from the cloud that the stars are made from, here there's a new mystery of why exactly are they correlated. And well right now there is maybe one simple answer. The nitrogen amount shows us how much the star enriched itself. But the sulfur amount shows us how rich the initial neighborhood was. And so here, since the stars formed in a richer galactic neighborhood generally have more elements including sulfur, those stars will also often be the ones that produce more internal elements like nitrogen. And so this very important strong link acts as a tool for scientists that can help them figure out the original mass and the evolution of the star that created the nebula. And so in some sense these planetary nebula are not just eye candies. They're crucial components of the galactic chemical evolution because here these stars produce a lot of heavier elements like carbon, nitrogen and oxygen that's then released into the rest of the galaxy. And as these elements are expelled by strong stellar winds, and in this case we're talking about nearly 1500 objects in the galaxy right now, all of these complex elements are then recycled into the vast interstellar medium to be then used by some other star in the future. And this enrichment is fundamental. As a matter of fact, everything inside of you and me and everything around us, all of the heavier elements originated inside various stars that went through various chemical evolutions. And so a lot of complex organic molecules most likely formed in similar events and were then ejected by some kind of a primordial planetary nebula from a star similar to our sun. Which once again confirms that we are star stuff after all. And so these types of large-scale planetary nebula studies help us understand stellar population across the Milky Way and help us understand how stars in various parts of the galaxy evolve slightly differently. Which also provides a lot of support for various galactic formation models, helping scientists understand how Milky Way evolved and how stars like our Sun actually formed. And this also of course offers us a glimpse into the fate of the Sun. Since our Sun is a G-type star, in approximately 5 to 7 billion years it's going to exhaust all of the hydrogen at its core and will dramatically expand becoming a red giant. And as this red giant starts shedding its outer layers, it will also form a somewhat similar planetary nebula, but in this case most likely a spherical one, just because the sun doesn't have a partner. And eventually it will become a white dwarf. And so by studying these planetary nebula, we can maybe predict the exact mechanisms and even predict the exact shape the solar system will form. And so studying these cosmic clouds actually teaches us so much more about these very powerful engines of cosmic recycling. And of course will eventually help us understand how and why life started on Earth and if it can exist somewhere else out there as well. But until we get some more answers about this, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. Check out some of the previous videos in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM me directly, or by joining channel membership that grants you early access and a few secret videos. You can also buy the wonderful person t-shirt in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.